What's up everybody? So today I'm going to be installing my brand new, well new to me, Power FC. So this one is obviously vehicle specific to the FD3S and I bought it for about $500 from somebody local. Now this can be had for cheaper than that. I found one the next day unfortunately on Up Garage for about $400. Same number, same serial number and everything. Um, so basically, you know, if you shop around, you can get a good deal on them. In the States, though, it's a little bit harder to get them. I think you pay roughly between like five or $700 in the States if you want to get one used in good condition. So this one was checked. It's uh, good to go, and it came with the FC Commander as well. So, you know, I feel like I got a decent deal on it. I could have obviously got a little bit better deal if I had just waited. Um, some things to look out for are obviously you can see it says power FC FD3S 4020 and then the last number is the serial number so the FD3S obviously means specific to the FD3S the 4 means that this is meant for the Zenki so 1 2 3 and 4 are for the Zenki 5 6 and and five and six are for the kooky and I mean that's pretty rough like I, I I'm not entirely sure how all the numbers work but I'm pretty sure that the five and six and beyond are for the kooky um, you can look up that information on the forums it's pretty readily available a uh, breakdown on which one to get the next number is the software version number so one zero one zero is the original software zero two zero is like Apexi's latest greatest software slash firmware version for this power FC so if you're really looking and you've got a Zenki um, FD3S this is the one that you want to get you want to get a 4 because that's the newest uh, hardware and you want to get the 020 because that's the latest firmware slash software at least that's my understanding of it I could be 100% wrong and uh, but that's after all my research that's what I found out and I also found out that this number is like a serial number or, or like a yeah it's like it's very like uh, it's specific to this actual box which is kind of funny because that's also my plate number so kind of random uh, weird coincidence anyways um, so the next thing you've got your connector for the power uh, FC uh, commander it's like a serial and then this I'm not 100% sure what that is I think it's for the data logic or data logic cable or log it cable I'm not sure um, where you can put in your own information and tune Ooh, almost dropped that and then on the back, the biggest reason why you want to make sure that you get a model that is correct for Zenki slash Kuki is because on the Zenki, it's got this OBD1 style, old style connector for the ECU. And on the new style, it's got like an OBD2 style, at least I believe that's specific to OBD1 slash OBD2. And uh, it's got like, it won't fit. So if you get the wrong uh, power FC, it's not going to fit on your car. You know what I mean? It's not going to, it's not going to work because it's going to be a totally different style and you're not going to be able to plug your ECU connectors into this. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pull off my panel down here because obviously I have a, the JDM spec, the Japanese version. My ECU is behind this panel. So I got to pull up this kickboard here, pull out this, and obviously I'm missing one here. Oh well, slide this forward like that. It comes this way pull it off and then there's three 10 mil bolts and uh, I'll have access to the ECU and I'll join me back up when I get to that point. All right guys, so I've got the car off and I've got the panels off. So the first thing I did when I bought this car was I wanted to check and see if it did actually have a power FC installed on it previously because it had a few mods and um, it looked a lot like it, it seemed a like it might have had a power FC at least at one point so I pulled up the panel and much to my surprise I found some wiring gremlins I pushed about that on the forums um, so that's one of the things that I want to tackle before I put in the power FC now it's important to remember that before you do anything with wiring especially near the ECU it's important one especially if you're soldering is that you unplug the battery and two unplug the ECU because especially when uh, wiring this closely to the ECU, 
the voltage the heat from the soldering iron and the solder running through the wires can actually cause micro um, inductions or micro currents or whatever to go into the ECU and you could possibly fry some circuits so here's let me show you what I'm dealing with so I've got the panel off here and you can see that it's just two screws um, those come right off you pull it off and then you pull out the two um, uh, clips here and the panel slides right off so then you can see that I've got my ECU and what's that some wiring issues and I noticed when I first bought the car that I had these wiring issues because if I took the panel off or moved these wires at all the car would shut off so yeah I'm not exactly happy about this at all um, it's even got some wires just hanging down here I'm really not sure what's going on so before I put in the power C and fuck anything up I'm gonna pull this ECU out I'm gonna disconnect the battery disconnect the connectors and I'm gonna basically take out all these I think they're called scotch locks scotch brights or whatever and I'm gonna basically fix all of those pins fix all of those wires um, shrink wrap them do it the right way and uh, yeah hopefully we have no issues or else I'm gonna be looking at getting a new harness or you know possibly more repairs anyways uh wish me luck and i'll uh i'll check in with you when i'm done all right guys i'm back i've got the battery disconnected and i've got the ecu out so i've with a little help from my my little helper here rory say hi she helped me take the ecu out so a little disheartening um I kind of knew this beforehand going in that it was going to be bad just looking at it from the outside. So that looks like junkyard writing. Um, I'm not quite sure what it says. I'm sure it's just denoting like what car it came out of or something like that. So ECU out of a junkyard, which kind of makes sense if it had a power FC in it and or the old ECU died or something like that. Um, and they went to a junkyard, pulled one out, etc. Um, the bad, that, that doesn't bother me that much because I'm not going to be using it. Um, but the bad part is this. Um, I, I don't know. It's not that this is like... It's just I don't understand why some of these are so close to the connectors. It doesn't make any sense. Um, but it looks like maybe there was a gauge, a gauge set in here at some point where they were like trying to jump off of here for certain things. I'll have to look at the wiring diagrams and figure out exactly what these wires are for. I'm thinking like maybe oil temp, um, maybe the map sensor. Uh, I think it's got a map sensor. Maybe uh, temp, uh, coolant temp, fuel pump on. Who the fuck knows why there are so many scotch locks in here and why they fucked up the wiring so bad and put these connections literally right at the f like ah i don't understand it so i might depin these and and see how bad it is and then just resolder and uh shrink wrap it i'm not sure but um that's my next step i'm gonna try to tackle that and i'll let you guys know how that goes when i come back wish me luck so i just wanted to take a quick video and show if it, if you guys didn't know what these red things are um they're basically used to splice in another wire without having to do any cutting or soldering or really anything at all but it's kind of the lazy man's wiring method because what it ends up doing is i don't know if you can see that let me see if i can get that in focus is it it basically chops into the existing wire and then you run another wire. So I didn't even cut this purple wire. That's how it was. So obviously there was a wire there at some point. Someone decided they didn't need it. Cut it out maybe to a, a gauge or something like that. Or, or a different sender. Or like a different type of ECU. Who knows. Um, but either way. All that does is it, it, just, it causes a problem in your wiring here. Because you've chopped into it. You're, in, you're, you're basically introducing resistance into that line and you're you're just waiting it's a ticking time bomb waiting to to bite you in the ass um especially if people use these type of um wiring connectors outside in a humid area moisture gets inside here gets inside your wires and before you know it you've got a short um or a uh or just corrosion 
It's just not good. It's it's the lazy person's way of doing things. And it's even worse that they did it so close to the wire terminal, the connector, because it's gonna make it that much more difficult to repair this, this problem. So I want some peace of mind that my wiring's okay. So I'm gonna be taking every single one of these out and and trying to figure out a good method to, to fixing these. If I if it means re-terminaling them, repinning them, who the fuck knows? I'll figure it out. Alright. All right, what's up guys? Caught a lucky break here. So I found on this connector that this little latch comes down. So you pull this latch back and then it allows you to de-pin each individual pin. Um, you gotta be careful. You obviously don't wanna fucking pull them all out. Uh, but as you can see, I've got this damaged pin out. I've got the scotch lock off. You can see that it took a pretty good bite out of the wire. So I'm gonna take the insulation back to that point and I'm gonna take a look at the wire, see if it's not damaged, I'm just gonna reapply. I have some shrink wrap, or some heat shrink, sorry, and I'm going to reapply insulation to it. If it's damaged, I'll have to resolder it. All right, so that's a good, good thing to know on these connectors. You just pull this little latch down, able to deep pin it. I'm hoping it's that way on all of them, which it looks like it is. So, kind of a good thing uh not a good thing i mean but a lucky break so stay tuned all right guys this, i got the sheathing off and i just want to show you what kind of damage a scotch lock or whatever the heck they're called can do you can see that some wires are broken and that it's really chomped down and compressed the wires in that one spot which believe it or not can actually cause uh resistance or more resistance in the line than you want. So, yeah, I'm gonna, uh, I don't know if I'm gonna restart this one. Um, I might try to, I'm just gonna probably re-insulate it if anything. Um, but I just wanna show you what, what the scotch locks can do. I'm gonna go through each one of these, assess the damage and determine what I wanna go do with it from there. And, uh, you know, hopefully none of them are much worse than this. All right, just want to show you guys. Hey guys, it's me and Rory. We're back and we just finished up the wiring on the harness. So there was a couple mysteries, a couple of weird things where they had wired a couple of weird stray wires together. Um, because it worked before, I left all of the wires pretty much in the same orientation that they were. A lot of the stuff that they had bypassed or like added to were grounds. So the only one wire that I was confused about is this green one right here. I actually capped it off in case it's uh, uh, so it doesn't short out in case it's a power for something. Um, but it's a pin. It was deep pinned. I'm assuming that it's deep pinned for this smaller connector right here. Um, so I'm not quite sure what it is. I'll have to look at the wiring diagram. There was a couple of loops, a couple of big like grounds and stuff like that. But basically I took it all out. I soldered what I had to solder and I recovered everything and it looks pretty good. So the next step is we're gonna plug in the stock ECU and we're gonna see if the car fires up and runs. Um, I don't want to put in the power FC with all this new wiring right now because if there's more problems and more issues, then uh, we won't know if it's the power FC or the wiring that we did. So I'm going to put in the stock ECU, plug everything up, start up the car, and cross my fingers. Hopefully it goes well. If it doesn't, then I'll diagnose it from there. Um, and if everything goes great, then we'll undo the stock ECU and we'll commence with the power FC install. All right. Say bye, Ray. Subscribe. <laughs>guys moment of truth uh, if we did all the wiring correctly the car should start up and there should be no issues so let's throw the key in wherever the hell that is right here and
go ahead and try and start it up. Sorry for the low light. Guess that's a good sign. No smoke coming from down there. Out of the ordinary, everything seems to be running just fine. I'm gonna go ahead and give it a little bit of gas. Everything seems to be fine. Yeah, I don't see anything out of the ordinary. Obviously the radio still didn't work. So that's another project for another day, but yeah, so far so good. I think that, uh, I think that pretty much confirms that our wiring came out at least decent enough to run and yeah I think we're good Alright guys, so I think that's going to wrap it up for today. It's getting a little bit too dark to shoot, so I will probably finish up the Power FC install tomorrow. Thanks for watching, and uh, yeah, stay tuned. Alright guys, so I'm back at the Power FC install, and I've repaired all the wiring. As you can see, here is some of the mess of crap that I pulled out. Um, a lot of scotch locks, a lot of stray wires and things like that. Um, so I've pulled all that out and then I repaired all the wires as best I could. Um, just mainly a lot of shrink wrap and things like that. And then I went ahead and I pulled up the wiring diagram and I'm going to go ahead and go over each one of the connectors on here and try to figure out maybe what this stray green wire here is and take a look at some of the bypasses and switches and changes that they've made to these connectors to try to figure out exactly why they did that and what's going on and what systems might be affected by that. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to do that and then I'm gonna plug in the, the, all these into the Power FC, mount it up and hopefully everything works fine and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do the initial calibration for the Power FC and look, try to make sure that everything's running just right and that the power of C is working just fine. So I'll catch up with you then. So now that I've done my due diligence and looked at all of the wiring and the connectors, I've marked it on here. I'm gonna go inside and I'm gonna check out what each one of these uh, changes are. Um, you can see on that pin 4H, They've spliced that one with the green wire. I'm not quite sure why. Um, and then on these two pins over here, they've stripped the sheathing and they've run that to a ground. And then over here, they've got uh, these two pins. So they pulled out the green pin on this one and left that one out. And then they've run a jumper from here to here. So I'm gonna go ahead and go inside and try to figure out what each one of those circuits do. And in the mean, uh, before I do that though, I'm gonna go ahead and you can see I've got my Power FC kind of temporarily mounted in there. Um, it's kind of loose. I'm gonna run it a little bit better than this later on. I've got that ground wire hooked into the chassis. I've got the Power FC commander hooked up. And I'm gonna go ahead and see if this thing turns on and uh, if the Power FC commander works and what kind of readings I'm getting. So cross my fingers, wish me luck. All right, so I've got my battery hooked up and I've got the Power FC installed. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the key and cross my fingers. Hopefully this thing works for $500 it should. That's a good sign. Okay, there we go. It says 13 water temps, 54 degrees Celsius, zero RPMs. Battery's at 11.5 volts. So, 
I have no idea how to use one of these things. So I'm going to go ahead and do some reading on the manual and I'll catch back up with you guys later. But I'm going to go ahead and before I do any of that, I'm just going to see if the car starts with this thing just in case. Um, and then after that, I'm going to turn the car off. I'm going to go through and do an adaptation cycle with this thing. So the RPM seem to be reading about right just under a thousand rpms or right hovering right around there um that's good the battery voltage is uh pretty decent so now that the car starts it seems to be running um i'm gonna go ahead and turn the car off and i'm gonna do an adaptation on this thing once i figure out exactly how to do that all right guys stay tuned <laughs> 